um, match precipitation is the core, I guess the, the starting point of this first half. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming you guys have heard, who hasn't heard of the words match precipitation used in irrigation context? Does that make sense to everyone? So MP rotators, I'm assuming everyone's used an MP rotator. The MP and MP rotator stands for match precipitation. Match precipitation is in irrigation, basically simulating uh, a rainfall event with irrigation all in, uh, with consistent amounts of water over a large or over whatever area you're watering. And no matter where it is, it's the same. So it's matched everywhere. So you're matching the precipitation. Now, the products like the MP Rotator, the Rainbird R Van, and the uh, I think Rainbird 5000 have a match precipitation nozzle. They can realistically be designed in any configuration and they'll generally match. Obviously the, the 800 SR and the 3500s for the MPs won't necessarily match with the ones, twos and threes. And then obviously you move to the R vans which match with each other and then you can use the 5000 match precipitation nozzles in a situation with R vans and you're gonna get match precipitation. Now the precipitation rates of all the different sprinklers vary depending on what you're using. So the Hunter MP Rotator in the ones, twos and threes, you're gonna deliver about 11 mil of water per hour per square meter, which is the lowest precipitation rate you'll get from a sprinkler. Then you move up to the R van, which is around 14 mil. Um, and then if you jump right out to um, some of the gear drives and the traditional sprays, you know, the pop-up sprinklers that just spray a full jet fan of water, they're in the third 20s to 40 mil an hour. So we're starting to get some really high flow and precipitation. So um, this information is quite important and quite relevant when we're working further down into the scheduling of the irrigation programming because you need to understand what the sprinklers are delivering in, to enable you to work out what, how long you want to run them for and that kind of thing. Now, the application rates jump straight from the precipitation rates. The, I, that should have probably been written there. That's the application rate there. The, you can design the traditional spray systems in a match, precipita a match precipitation configuration. The thing is you just can't put say a 10A, a 12A and a 15A necessarily on the same line because they're all putting out different amounts of water. But if you only use 10A, uh, 10As and they were like a, a quarter and a half, you're getting that. So a quarter is half the amount of water as, sorry, two quarters is the same as a half in that situation. When we design say an open space, like a large oval, if we're using a sprinkler nozzle in a standard gear drive and the nozzles are three gallon per hour, we'll then put a 1.5 gallon per hour nozzle in the quart. So, that, so we'll have full circles at three and then we'll do half circles at 1.5 because obviously a sprinkler is going back and forth twice as often as a full circle. So then we have to allow for that to make sure that we're getting match precipitation. So you've got your oval and then all the sprinklers that we design around the outside are only going like that. So we run them on one line. And then obviously you've got the ones down the middle, they'll go on a different line so that we know that we can get the match precipitation. So we'll water for less time because they're covering double the area in the same amount of time. So all of that ensures that you're getting that match precipitation. I used the example yesterday of someone dragging a sprinkler around a lawn, you know, like oh, I guess when I was a kid, um, you just have the, those round metal sprinklers on a hose and you just kind of leave it out there until someone remembers and then drag it to something else. That's the complete opposite of match precipitation. That's just flooding certain areas. And you do, by doing that, you might have a, a whole lot of water there and then a whole lot of water there, but then they're not joining across there. So the idea is that you get your application rate being that, but accurately by using either good irrigation design or using products that are match precipitation like the MP rotators. So the same uh, concept applies for drip irrigation as well. So if you're looking to irrigate a garden bed and you're running drip line as you would probably see in more densely planted areas where you've got a spacing between the drip line of a predetermined amount so it might be 300 or 400 or 500 and then you've got a spacing between the drippers also predetermined obviously whatever comes on the roll. This can be 0 0.3 by 0 0.3, 0 0.4 by 0 0.4, 0 0.3 by 0 0.4, it depends on the spec. Um, any of you guys, you guys do commercial work. So obviously in a lot of those cases, you're gonna get 
a specification and that's it. You're working to that. You don't step outside those lines. Residentially, it's going to come, well, you do a lot of commercial work as well. But residentially, it's probably going to be left in the hands of you to make the right decisions around this. Now, recently, some of the, there's a council north of here that's had specifications of 0.3, 0.3 and 1.6 litres an hour. The amount of, uh, the, the actual uh, the application rate or the precipitation is somewhere in the vicinity of 25 or 30 mil an hour when you're getting that close to it together. And you get to a situation where the soil can't actually handle that much water. So it's important for you guys to think about your soil profile and your soil types when you're actually, if you're choosing the, the, the spacing, but even in situations where it's specified for you, it's often only specified because it's been stolen from a document that was stolen from another document that was stolen from another document 20 years ago and they haven't changed the, the document. So we're probably more likely to stand up and say, hey, this isn't right. We think we could change it. Most people just go with it and then they wonder why there's flooding or there's squelching or whatever because it's no one's... A lot through that whole journey, no one's actually stopped and said, hang on, is this right? Like it's just because they used to do it because they used to do it. So if you're gridding like this, you will have the ability to actually calculate your application rate, which might be 17 mil an hour, it might be 25 mil an hour. And then that obviously helps you when you're trying to work out your application further. If you just snake your drip tube around and then there's just a dripper wherever, 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 and there's a tree there and there's a tree there and there's a tree there, the scheduling is going to going to be different. We can't. We we there's there's just this tunnel of water. There's no. You could you'd, you'd probably move down the path of looking at it and going. Well, there's two drippers either side of that tree, and they both put out 1.6 liters an hour. That tree needs 10 liters a week, so we're just going to water. We'll reverse engineer that to make sure that we're watering for the right amount of time.